And what does asset mean? Uh, well, it uh, usually means what we say uh, free carbons. Is that what it is? Uh, there's the I get it confused because there's uh, an acetone. It means something different than. Let's do a quick review of that. What does form mean? One. An asset always means two carbons, except for the one exception of acetone, okay, there we go. which is three carbons. But except for this single exception, acetone, which has three carbons, asset always means two carbons. Well, this is not acetone, even though it looks kind of similar to it. And you actually, you came up with this. This is how you drew it. You drew it that says two carbons over here. So you came up with the right structure. Okay, so this is a common name. This is not the IUPAC name here, but everyone uses this common name. So this would be a good thing to know, acetophenone. Uh, two carbons, ketone, and then the phenyl group over here. Except for acetone, acid always means two carbons. And you came up with that, good. And so now we have more work to do. Yeah, now we have to start adding reagents to this to make it into this. What about uh, an acyl halide? Sounds good to me. That's right. And um, let me see. We, and we're not going to need a catalyst because it's an acyl halide, which just mm -hmm. doesn't need it. Right. Um, I think we're, we're good. Are we good to go? It looks like I think I'm ready. Well, I'll show the mechanism for what happened. Oh, there. you want the mechanism? Okay. Right. Okay. Let's go through some uh, useful techniques here. One thing I'm going to do is it always helps to draw your intermediates like your product. So rather than drawing this like this, let's draw it like this, just to save us a little bit of confusion. Then I'm going to put in some numbers. I'll call this number one and number two. Okay. And the purpose of those numbers is to label the corresponding carbons in this picture. So this would be the number one carbon, and this would be the number two carbon. I think it's pretty clean, clear that these correspond to each other. The phenyl is like a landmark here. And now what should I call this carbon? Well, I'll come up with a brand new number for it, because it didn't uh, appear in the starting I need, I need a base. To do what? To deprobe uh, uh, OK, that might work, and we'll talk about that in a second. OK, but I think you're on the right track there. But let's, uh, so here's the numbers that we could put in. Okay. And then you came up with the thing that we wanted to get attacked. You said, gee. It might help to squiggle the bond that we're trying to form. We're trying to form this bond between the number two and the three. It's always helpful to squiggle. So we need some way for the number two to attack the number three. So we need to do two things. We need to make the number two nucleophilic, and we need to make the number three electrophilic. Well, you came up with a way to make the number three electrophilic, just to make it into an acyl halide. All right. We know that these are very reactive electrophiles. But what we neglected is we didn't make this into a nucleophile. Now, you suggested we could use a base. Now, that would make this into an enolate. And then we could do an additional elimination. Uh, but for various reasons, that's not the best approach oh. here. Uh, maybe because the enolates are um, too reactive. I'm not quite sure why an enolate's not the best approach here. But we want a more moderate nucleophile. What's the way that we just learned to make this alpha carbon into a nucleophile? What's the technique that we've just been learning for making an alpha carbon? By uh, adding an enamine. That's right. Or an amine. By making it into an enamine. OK, so let's use that approach. Actually, I, I, there's this, the problem actually said, show how to use acylation or alkylation of an enamine to do the synthesis. So maybe it wasn't very fair that it didn't include that. OK, so it, the, the problem is specifically telling us to use an enamine. So what do we need to add to this to make it into a enamine? Well, just in we general, what do we need to add? We can add any amine. Right? Yeah, what type of amine? Uh, a second. That's right. You come up with any secondary amine that you want. The uh, standard one it could be a ring, or it could be a nitrogen to two alkane group. Right. For some reason, this is a pretty standard 
uh, secondary enemy that's used here. So um, we can go ahead and stick with this. And we want to add an acid catalyst. So now let's draw what would be the product just of this step. What would be the product of combining this and this? So would these be all, if you were doing this in the laboratory, would these be all added at the same time? No, that's a good question. I think first we would add this. Okay. And now what are we going to add to this? We're going to add the, um, the uh, acyl halide. Now we can add the acyl halide. Why was it premature to try to add the acyl halide before? Because we hadn't made this into a nucleophile yet. That was why I asked you to draw the mechanism as a way to jog our memory to see that we didn't have this as a nucleophile yet, even though it's not a mechanism problem. So now is our step two. We can add this. All right. And uh, maybe to save time, we'll skip the mechanism. But what's going to be the product from that step? Let's just draw the product from that step. Let's actually show the electron pushing arrows for this first step. Oh, okay. Let's show the electron pushing arrows for the first step. So for the first step, these electrons are going to come in. Mm -hmm. Now you showed the chlorine leaving. Of course, it wouldn't leave in that very same step, Correct. would it? That was just a, a shortcut. Now the one thing that you left out is remember that we imagine this lone pair kicking these off, and that's what uh, would help us to draw the product correctly. That was, that's what was missing from your picture there. Okay, and my, so, and my, uh, my chlorine atom should still be attached though, correct? Um, well, not, not, uh, I don't want to go through the whole mechanism. So, um, after, so in, after the first step, the chlorine will be attached, and then when the carbonyl reforms, it will be gone. Um, I just wanted to show the arrows for the first step, because that gives us this bond here, which we were, which we were missing before. Anytime you try to skip the mechanism, it's always easy to get confused and make mistakes. So after the addition and elimination, the one part that you were missing was there would be this double bond and this positive charge. Remember, we make this aminium intermediate uh, because this is kicking down over here. So this was two steps. I haven't shown the whole mechanism here. But that would give us this. All right, and then what's our last step? Uh, the addition of H3O plus which your instructor might just write as hydrochloric in water. Okay. Yeah, the way your instructor writes that. And the purpose of that is to reveal the hidden carbon yield here and kick off this nitrogen. So some techniques that we used here that are helpful are putting in numbers, putting in the squiggle, drawing the starting materials like the product. No. But the, the only thing that um, you didn't get here was how to make this into a nucleophile. Now, I, again, um, one way we seem to do that is with the base that makes an enolate, but what we're reviewing right now is making it into an enolate. Okay. So now we have that synthesis. So I guess there was one, two, three steps of reagents total. Here, here, and here. Try to do this synthesis. Let's try to use the techniques we were just talking about. Try to put in some numbers, put in a squiggle, and maybe to save time here, we won't go through all the intermediates. We'll just say what our reagents are going to be.
let's put in some numbers on the starting material and the product that will help us decide.